good morning. You have a big head. Yes, sir. It's time for the tournament, boys. I'm ready. And to go with the theme, I'm going to need Tom Izzo to not bring the little dick energy. I'm going to need him to <laughs> pop the Viagra before the game. Pop it. And let's go. Bring the energy for a Spartan team that has underachieved. Bring the big dick energy today, and let's beat Mississippi State. Let's go. I don't want to sit back at noon and be booing my alma mater. Tom Izzo's got to bring it. He's got to be a factor because he has underwhelmed all throughout this year with his rotations, with the manner in which he's gotten this team to play. So now it's time. It's time for Tom Izzo to carry this team into the Sweet 16. Let's go. That's what Let's I'm go, Doc. About. I I'm – I'm taking on a – we're a Detroit sports show, so we're rooting for both OU, which I know you're a Golden Grizzlies – actually, it's more of a Detroit Mercy fan, but you support the Golden Grizzlies and Michigan State today. Any predictions? Number nine, Michigan State versus number eight, Mississippi State. We'll just start right here. What are you thinking about this game? Yeah, look, I think Michigan State goes as Jaden Akins and Tyson Walker go. If they can shoot and uh, the guard play can live up to expectations – Heading into the season, you thought that Michigan State had elite guards. If they can play stout defense, I expect Michigan State to advance. And then with Oakland, I think that that's going to be a real grinded out kind of game. But in the end, I just think that Kentucky's got too much. But it's going to be a fun primetime game with yes. that's going to feature the o the Oakland Golden Grizzlies. It's a great story with uh, Townsend and Golkey and the way in which they're going to play. They're going to play great defense. So the tournament's here. I'm locked in, ready. I'm going to be sitting in this chair probably for the next 12 hours, and Boom. I'm going to enjoy college basketball and cuss out the Michigan State Spartans when they turn the ball over <laughs> and have those <laughs> offense. You know, you know when Michigan State's playing bad, they have the offensive lulls, they have the turnovers, but, man, I think the Michigan oh. State game is going to be a race to 35. My God. You might be right. You might be right. Fortunately, I am picking MSU to win that game. And look, you got a big head too. <laughs> I I just naturally have a big head, so I feel like I fit here on this screen. Um, but Doc, I got to uh, not to uh, bring the mood down at all. I want to ask your opinion. We talked uh, on your podcast yesterday about this Cam Sutton situation. There haven't been any new uh, that I'm aware of any new news to that new details that have surfaced this morning. But what are your initial thoughts and and I was talking before the break. Do you have any experience dealing with, I don't know, custody battles, domestic, in, in your other professional, your your profession as the doc? Yeah, no doubt. Um, it's tough. You know, I am, um, outside of being a sports reporter, uh, 20 years ago, I got my degree in psychology. I have a private practice, but I've scaled it down a little bit because, you know, I also have a passion for sports and, and for the Detroit Lions as well. But back in the day when I started, uh, my private practice, I would take on all clients, children, adults, couples, and the nastiest cases, the toughest cases involved custody disputes. It involved putting the kids in the middle and it involved just two adults just slinging mud at each other. And it was the toughest, emotionally toughest to deal with. So in the last five years, I have just completely avoided any cases that I know yeah, that I know involve custody disputes. There's no win. I don't want to end up in court having to defend my position. And so for me, being successful with the psychology practice in sports, I've decided to just uh, pick and choose certain clients I want to work with. And I I'll completely avoid custody disputes because it's just so emotional, high tense. And it's just very much a situation in which when you're involved in something like that, there's a primal nature when you, it involves kids. And yeah. I just did not want to be put, I did not want to be put in the middle of that. And if, if that's the case for Cam Sutton, it's also something that, you know, hopefully when he's found, he can get addressed through therapy and, and get himself right. Because first and foremost, when you got family problems, you cannot be right mentally at all. It's just not going to happen, let alone play football at the highest level. Yeah, I hear you. Prayers up to all them. This is a uh, ongoing, a fluid situation. We've been talking about it, so I'm, I'm not going to spend too much time. But I know KG... And for all, we're, we're going to jump ahead a little bit. This is not Doc or us trying to be insensitive, but we have some questions just about the Lions on the football field, like what this could mean contractually. KG, I know you got a question for Doc. Yeah, what's up, Doc? Um, yeah, a lot of people online have been discussing, you know, if the Lions were to cut Cam Sutton, that's supposed to provide some kind of uh, financial relief cap-wise. Um, what are your thoughts, or do you have any information that would suggest that 
if the Lions, you because you have to assume that Cam Sutton, we won't have his services for the upcoming season. Do you have any information that would suggest that that would provide any cap relief if they were to release him? Yeah, absolutely. And here's how it goes. Um, obviously, the Lions are going to do their due diligence. They're going to get all the information, go through the process. And if indeed they find that Cam Sutton broke a contract clause, they will get cap relief, but it's not something like the ten and a half million, uh, his cap hit. It's not like something they can just bank and store. They have to use it. From my understanding, they'd have to just go out and spend it on a free agent. So it's it's something that I know some of the insensitive fans online were like, well, you know, even though the Cam Sutton's going through a personal matter, you know, his play on the field wasn't that great. They yeah. kind of looked at it from that perspective, and that's how a lot of fans will look at it. Um, in regards to what is the cap saving. But in the end, it would just probably mean the Lions would go out and get another cornerback or use the uh, allocation for uh, opportunities to improve the team. So it's unfortunate. I do kind of think that's what would happen. But I am curious because, you know, you look at it and this is one of the first tests for Brad Holmes in regards to yeah. how we treat players. That's and right. the locker room, the locker room is going to look at this. If Cam Sutton emerges and he tells a story about, you know, struggling with his mental health or having an episode or something happen, and you just blow him out of your organization, some are going to say, hey, wait a minute, you're insensitive. I hearken back to Nick Saban when he had a player that was, you know, having trouble at Alabama. You can go online and see his famous speech where he said, hey, do I just blow out this guy and send him out to the streets or do I embrace him? Do I help him grow, learn from his mistakes, help him <clears throat> and and help him grow as a man and as a person? And uh, that is the biggest challenge also in my professional career in regards to psychology is the notion of what's a right punishment for somebody who does wrong and what's the level of mental health concerns that drive these behaviors. And for the Lions, this is delicate. It's very much a situation in which they will, I think, you know, look to gather all the facts, all the information, and they'll definitely follow all the protocols. But if indeed Cam Sutton's run in Detroit's over, then the Lions will just uh, have opportunities to get players to fill the void, probably at the cornerback position. Gotcha. Thank you for that information, Doc. Yeah. On, on the football field now, uh, it seemed there was a need at least to add one more cornerback anyway, whether Cam Sutton's on the roster or not. What would be your strategy now? Uh, sort of finishing off the second era, are you going to go free agent? Uh, my guy Stephon Gilmore is out there, plus some other guys. Do you go draft? We're talking Kool-Aid McKinstry in the next segment. He he turned some heads in his pro day yesterday. How would you attack this uh, this next month and a half? Yeah, no, it, it really does. The Cam Sutton situation throws a monkey wrench into the entire operation because you and I talked about it on the Detroit Sports Podcast. We just talked about how potentially the Lions could have went best player available in the draft. Now, maybe there's more of an emphasis on cornerback. Is it Kool-Aid McKinstry? Do you, do you trade up? Do you take a swing for Quinion Mitchell? Do you go for the best cornerback? You know that Brad Holmes got an up-close look at Tyrion Arnold and Kool-Aid McKinstry. You hope that they will fall potentially to that spot. But I look at it and I say the Lions in this draft have a lot of options where if a player that they want at the defensive back spot is not there, maybe you go TJ Tampa in the second round. There are some players that have depth that, you know, that, that can be players that you can add in later rounds of the draft. But I think you, you, you tackle it. You can never have enough cornerbacks. Yeah. And if Cam Sutton's not the answer anymore, then quickly at this point, before any moves are made, you're counting on Carlton Davis and hopefully a returning and healthy Emmanuel Mosley. And you got Robertson now, who's a free agent. And potentially speaking, you go out there and get a veteran in Stephen Gilmore to pair him with his brother. You look at the development of the players already on the roster, and it's just a tough position to fill for the Detroit Lions. And so as many cornerbacks as you think you need to have competition and to fill out your roster, man, it's, it's unfortunate. Cam Sutton really did. You know, this situation comes out of the blue, throws a monkey wrench, and could have long-lasting ramifications for the organization.